All right, here we go. Um, today I'm talking about stretching stories, stretching stories, right? Um, I just was, uh, I just started writing a short, uh, a film short that I, um, I'm going to direct and produce and all the cinematography, even going to edit it myself. And, um, Possibly, I had somebody that actually told me they, they might be interested in working with me on it. So as much as I like to try to do stuff by myself, I might not, or I wanted to, I might have to wait. Anyway, um, the story, uh, for it to be a compilation, I don't really want to do any more stories. So I'll, um, I need it to be at least 60 minutes. So for me, I have three stories. This story happened to be um, really untimed, but the way I was thinking of it, it didn't seem like it was going to be uh, 20 minutes. I needed each story to be 20 minutes, 20 pages, and it didn't seem like this story was going to be that long. Now, if it goes over 20 minutes, it's not really that big of a deal. I'm fine with it, uh, but it didn't seem like it was going down that route. So I was like, sheesh. Uh, Short stories are like a joke, you know what I'm saying? It has a setup, a premise, a setup, and a punchline, you know? And if you deviate from that, you risk uh, something, uh, what do you call it? You risk it just losing its flow, losing its energy, you know what I'm saying? So um, it is a skill to stretching a story without um, losing all of that energy. It was a big accident in front. And as sad as it is, my son is now driving. Not sad. As good as it is, my son is now driving. But it's sad because I'm like, now I'm thinking every accident, sheesh. Oh, let me see who's in the car. I don't worry about that with my wife because my wife has been driving for years. My son, he just started. So anyway, that's a real deviation. But, um, I wanted to stretch this story. And um, how I write is, I think of like kill movies, kill, I think of kill movies, and kill movies have like a series of different kills. You can't kill the same way, or else it becomes redundant. You can do all, anything you wanna do, but killing the same way over and over and over and over again is redundant and gets boring. So um, one of the first things I do whenever I write a script, a kill, a horror script is I um, think of the different killings, right? So um, the same way that I think of the different killings, um, in another story or a different genre, I think of different expressions, different manifestations, different big scenes, different element. Not, I'm trying to think of not elements, but ways to further it, uh, further the story, right? This is the problem when you are self-taught. I did teach, I did go to a uh, screenwriting school, but um, uh, I, it's been so long ago, I may not remember the exact term, terminology of it. But in comedy, we call it tags, right? So if you think of a, a joke, you have your, your premise, your setup, and then your punchline, a tag is almost like another punchline. It's like another reiteration. So combining both those skills of learning how to tag a joke and l learning um, just like having this, the, the, the mentality of thinking of kill scenes over and over, and different types of kill scenes, you know, throw this guy, cut this guy's head off, you know, stab him from underneath the chin, you know, and, and drag this person. You know, I start thinking of those different ways when I'm writing a, a horror movie. So um, with other movies, I start thinking, you know, how can I illustrate it and not repeat it, okay? Um, so it's like with Gold Digger Killer, I didn't have her kill one player, one player, two, player three. I had her kill a player. Then I had her kill the dudes that raped her. Then I had her kill another guy that was, you know, trying to rape her and then you know she killed uh, 
a girl, a female pimp. You know what I'm saying? So it was different in um, different types of people and different ways that she killed them. So that's the way I look at this. Um, so take this particular story that I um, am writing now. One of the things that I thought of was, what is a central conversation, you know? And how can I have scenes that illustrate that central conversation and um, expand on it, right? And illustrate that uh, next point. So you make one point, right? Now you say, okay, what's another point that's a good point to make that goes along with that point that I just made? And that's somewhat how you stretch it. I, 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 I hate if I'm not really um, doing a good job of explaining this, but you know, um, you never know, you may get it. And maybe I'll reflect back on this when the story comes out. And I can say, you know, the different elements because I can't really tell you what the story is without um, kind of spoiling it or um, I want you to see it. So after it comes out, probably I'll put a director's commentary because um, I figured out how to do that now, which is like add a second audio track or a fourth audio track to my film. Oh boy. Uh, editing is amazing, so now I know how to do a director's commentary audio track over the regular film's audio track. So I kind of want to do that with um, all of my films because I think it's a cool thing to do. But particularly this film, I'm going to do it because um, I'm doing. I plan to do everything, so um, I know I'm a really good writer and I know how to uh, produce a movie. My directing skills are getting better and my um, editing and all of that is like beginner. So I need to put as much other stuff into this film as possible. So if I got to do director's commentary, I'm going to do bloopers, you name it. I'm going to put everything in there to make it hot, right? Or at least that's what I'm planning. So with uh, this particular story... Um, I had to go back and go to the central question and um, find out if there was enough discussion of that question without it being boring and then good enough examples of, of that uh, particular answer and in that discussion, you know, to, to fully exhaust it. And I wanted to keep in mind of the pacing of it you know it's, it's one thing to add on to the ending and give you a false ending but if you continue too much it becomes departed you right you know the, the the departed so many false endings that you almost don't know where the hell the movie or the story actually uh, ends or you know where it's going to end because it ends but then so many false endings make you recalculate everything you thought was the ending you know there's another one um, I just saw. Give it another, another good example is um, the movie Aliens with Sigourney Weaver. Now, in that movie, you had one ending was okay. They got the kid. Let's get off this planet. Then all of a sudden, the kid falls. I think down a drain, and when they go get the kid, the kid is gone, snatched by aliens. So now they got to go get the kid. Uh, uh, um, from the aliens she gets the kid from the aliens and when she gets there she sees oh shoot it's a female alien laying eggs F this burn the damn alien up so this is spoiler alert right but it's old movie so you and we're studying it anyway she, she goes out right um, and kills the, the burns up the aliens eggs all the aliens eggs Huh? You think that's over? All we gotta do is get back to the ship? Nope. The alien rips apart, and now while they're about to take the elevator to get to the airplane to take them off the planet, here comes the alien charging down. They get on the ele elevator. Thank God. Whew. Beat the alien, left it on the planet. Here it comes again. The ship is taking a long time to pick them up. All right. When they get to the you know, it looks like, well, we're about to die. The 
and the door opens and the other alien, the alien mother is coming up the elevator and the door opens and they're about to get eaten. Right before the, the door opens, the ship arrives. They get on the ship, now take off before the um, complex explodes and they're off. Beautiful. When they get to the mothership, they get off the ship. Lo and behold, the damn alien got under the landing gear and now is in the docking bay. So now she's got to fight the alien in the docking bay. She kills the alien and now they're off. No more things go on. But that's like six or seven false endings. You know what I'm saying? However, each one of those, it's almost like overtime. It's not a big deal if an overtime basketball game, if the first overtime dude dunks on dude and such dude fouls out trying to block the dunk. That's the end of the first overtime. Then the second overtime, another person ties it up. You know what I'm saying? But if you keep having the same thing push you to overtime, it becomes irritating. Even if you have different things, eight overtimes? How the hell many overtimes are you going to have? So you got to be careful of that. And then the other thing you want to do is even in the body of your story, your act, one, pretty much you can't lengthen that out because people, one, act one is where you kind of telling everybody what the movie is about or the story is about. So you can't really drag that out too much. And then act two, you drag that out too much, people's going to fall asleep. All right, it becomes a never-ending story. Golly. All right, all right. How many different places are you going to go, uh, Dorothy, before you get to Oz? Sheesh. Uh, wake me up when they get to Oz. That's the type of stuff that you that you hear. You know what I'm saying? So you need to get to your Act 3. And when you get to your Act 3, you don't want to have too long of an Act 3. We know how to deal with this wizard. You know, let's knock it out. You understand know what I'm saying? So when you're stretching out a story, you kind of want to keep a lot of that in there. Fortunately, if you're stretching a short story, there's a lot of a story left to tell uh, because um, it's already a short story. You know what I'm saying? You're not stretching out a long story that isn't um, that's already told. You're tre stretching out a short story. And mind you, all stories, every story is a window in the time period of the universe. The universe is infinite. So every story within the span of the universe in infinity, if that's a word, is short. So if you look at that concept, fine. You only have an hour and a half to tell your movie, 60 minutes to make it a feature, knock yourself out. So anyway, um, I don't know if I've covered everything, but I did cover a lot. And really, that's all I wanted to just was talk about stretching. Um, all right. Wow. All right. Peace, y'all.